Hello, my name's Rob, and welcome to Swift Slots. And welcome back to part two of the Pendle Slot Racing Supervan 1 build project. Now, in the last video, I took a standard Pendle Slot Racing Ford Transit Van Resin kit, and from those parts, I created the masters to make a Supervan 1 kit. So in this video, I'm going to be taking these masters that I've made, turning them into rubber, and then turning them into a proper resin kit for Supervan 1. Now, the full intention is that Pendle Slot Racing will be putting this whole kit, when it's finished, on their website so that it's available to be purchased by all. So, let's crack on, let's get these patterns into rubber mould so that we can finish the project and Pendle Slot Racing can offer them to you guys. Okay, so let's get all these moulds into the mould boxes and to save you the pain of more fast forward work, I've done all the hard work for you so we can just get straight to the meat of the, of the project. So the first thing I've done here is I've made a very simple chipboard box, absolutely nothing special, and it's been made big enough to get the Supervan body into. That's super simple. I've then made this other very simple box out of a bit of three mil plastic card, and that is big enough to go over the masters for the other components here. And I've roughly laid them out in the shape that I want. And then here I've got two layers of duct tape what I should do there is I shall plonk my masters onto the duct tape as they're laid out here. And when it's all done, I shall plonk that over the top and that'll take care of that. On the body, I've used white tack in the windows because I find that white tack works far better than blue tack. I don't find blue tack sticks very well, but I found this white tack to stick really well. So I've pushed white tack into all the windows, made sure that I've got a really good seal. And on the back of it, I've used this modelling clay. I believe they call it Chavant or Chavant, but it's basically non-drying plasticine, and this is a soft version. So I've pushed a load of plasticine into the bottom of this body, and before I get too deep, I've run aluminium foil tape just around the very edge of the inside of the body to give me a wall, and then I've built the Chavant right up to the bottom of the model, and I've put this little bit of extra plastic card down the side so that I've got a bit more of a gap where the where the rubber will be because I found that if you leave it too tight the air can't rise out the model when you're molding it and it can cause air bubbles down the side of the model so just giving it a bit more thickness here allows the air to escape a little bit more easily there's still a little bit of a pinch point along here but that can be manipulated out when you pour the resin in with a stick and it just allows the air to come up but just experience has given me that knowledge so that's basically the model all ready to go there and what I shall do is I again lay down a few layers of tape put the tape in the bottom roll the tape up the sides of the box plonk the van into the box and we're ready to go with all of this slot here so I'll go on to fast forward now I'll get these molds all set up exactly as I've explained and then we'll get to casting up the rubber and putting the rubber into the molds give it 24 hours to dry and then we can start the second process of the second half of the mold making
one, two, three. Three supervan kits. And there we are. It's real. The kit exists and multiplied three times. So here we have the body, all nicely cast up, ready to go. And then we have the interior with the window and the seat, driver figure, wheel inserts, dashboard, steering wheel, tailpipe, and then the chassis mounts. So with all these kits now cast, it's time now to clean them all up and get them all painted up and made as full blown kits. Now kit number one, it's going to be mine and kit number two is going to be Pendle Slot's demonstration model and kit number three is going to be the kit I'm going to put together for Pendle Slot so that they can show customers a kit unassembled as they would receive it if they purchase one when they're ready. Hopefully they'll keep this kit as a kit forever and they'll keep their demonstrator as a demonstrator forever. That'll be lovely but it's up to them. But I'm going to build these two kits now, kit one and kit two for myself and for Pendle. Right, let's crack on, let's get some primer on these models and get to painting. Okay, so I've put a stop on the video right there because we don't really want to go rushing off ahead and painting the body. Really what we need to do is we need to get these chassis mounts on and the only way to do that is to build the chassis. Then we can paint the body and then you can put the chassis into the body with minimum fuss and minimum handling because the last thing you want to be doing is manhandling a fully finished painted body that's just asking for trouble. So let's get and build this chassis and it's really really simple. All you do is you start by getting your two bearings and fitting them into the chassis. Once you're happy that the bearings in the chassis are nice and square you'll take your motor and you want to put the motor into the chassis just like that then you want to take your gear pop your gear into place and put your back axle which is the shorter axle through the back of the car and then secure it into place with a 0.9 allen key then you want to take your wheel and pop your wheels onto your axles so that is very very close now to where we need to be it's a little bit narrow but it's really really close so the next job we need to do is get the front end assembled so you use your longer axle which is 54 mil and we pop a wheel on and we bring that wheel level with the end of the axle which is just in here like that right there and then we take the other wheel and we go again level with the end of the wheel and nip it up and what you'll find is you've got a massive gap there now we need to fill that gap to stop the side float so that's where these spaces here come in handy so we need to mound up that gap with these spaces until we have the right number of spaces on the axle so as you can see all of these spaces here come up to 17.6 mil. These two larger spaces are a bit too large, so we can't use those. So 17.6 mil there, and we actually only need 16.1. So we're a little bit over. So what I propose to do, get yourself a piece of scrap wood, take the largest spacer and just trim the largest spacer down until you've got an even thickness on both of these larger spacers and then you can remeasure and get the right distance and then once you've got it really really close and that is to be fair very very close take those two that you've just trimmed pop them on a little bit of sandpaper and then you can bring them home to the exactly the right size that you need and now you can see we've got 15.89, which is just the perfect distance to go in there. So obviously now what we can do is simply half these spacers, put half on each side of the axle, and you're good to go. There, 
that's what you're aiming for almost no end flow a little bit but not too much and a nicely free moving front axle so once you've got your axle completely spaced out correctly to the 54 mil axle now you'll find that the wheels are flush to the arches of your body now in reality i think under certain circumstances at the very least that the supervan one wheels front wheels were a little bit wider than the arches i've seen pictures where they do appear that way but for the sake of the slot car i think having them dead flush with the arch is ample okay so once you've got your front axle all in place and you've got just the right amount of end float and the wheels are nice and free to turn you need to then insert the front of the chassis into the rear of the chassis now underneath here you'll see a small screw hole and what you need to do is push this whole front end tight up against the bulkhead of the chassis and with a 1.8 mil drill just drill straight through the inside part of that chassis there then from your screws you need to take one of the screws and pop him into that hole so once you've got your chassis all together as one you should find that when you put the back wheel dead center to the arch the front wheel falls at exactly the right position which is very slightly backwards of the center of the front wheel arch so the next job is to put the wire into your guide so you simply cut your wire in half and load up your guide as you would normally do then once you have your guide all braided up you can then pop him into the chassis and then use the large flathead screw to screw the guide in place you don't need to crank these down like crazy you just need to bring that head just level with the top of your guide and then simply push your wires into place and there it is the finished chassis all done now the front axle should be set up so that there's just a small amount of resistance on those front wheels on the mounting plate but when you actually roll the chassis along you actually get the wheels to turn so they're barely touching the ground and that's that's where we want it for now I'm not going to solder the wires to the motor at this stage nor am I going to grease or oil anything on this chassis I'm going to leave all the greasing and all the oiling to the very end of the job when the body is fully painted and there's no chance of getting any grease or oil from my fingers onto the body while it's being painted so the next job is to get this chassis mounted to the body and the way we do that is we use these mounting blocks now the way these mounting blocks work is they fit onto the chassis just like this so on these chassis pieces you will see that there are four dimples we need to drill those dimples out to 1.8 mil and then what we can do is put these chassis rails onto the chassis and then transpose those marks that we've made or those holes that we've made through these side plates into this chassis at 1.8 mil and then we need to open them up to 2.3 millimeters Now at this stage it's worthwhile stopping because what we can do is we can now open up this hole to 2.3 millimeters and then pop a screw through there so that we got a nice lock on the side frame. And then once you've got the side plate screwed to the chassis you've then got a nice solid lock so that you can transfer your hole there through into the other side of the chassis without fear of everything moving around. And slacken that screw off a couple of turns move the side plate away and then open that up to 2.3 millimeters and there you go so that's all mounted on nice and squarely and simply repeat for the other side Then, when you've done that, you should end up with a chassis looking exactly like this, where the chassis is sitting nice and tight into these rebates, and all four screws are nicely snugged home. 
So now what I find best to do with resin is just scuff up the inside of this mounting rail here just enough to agitate the surface of the resin and on the top and on the corner and do that on both sides. And then do exactly the same on the inside of the body as well. Just on that inside flat piece there. And on the bottom half of that rebate there, just to agitate the resin. Same on the other side. Once you've sanded both sides of your chassis support rails and the tops, and you've sanded the inside of the body so it's smooth, you can then mount your body onto your chassis and hold it in place with two lightweight elastic bands. Once you've got the body all mounted to the chassis with the elastic bands, you want to adjust the chassis back and forth so that the rear wheel falls exactly in the middle of the rear arch and that you cover up half of the tyre on the bottom of the rear arch. Make sure you've got that correct on both sides of the chassis. And once you're happy, the chassis is square to the body and the wheels are in the correct place, you can then run super glue into this rebate on both sides so that you bond the chassis mounting rails to the body. And then you want to leave the whole body to dry for at least a couple of hours, giving chance for the super glue to bond nicely to the resin. Okay, so I've left this overnight for the glue to well and truly dry, and we can now take off the elastic bands and liberate the chassis from the body. And that concludes the general fitment of the body to the chassis so that we can now crack on and get this body prepped and painted. So back to the chassis, there's a couple of things of note with this chassis when you're setting it up. One thing that I didn't really cover properly when I built this chassis up in front of you was the height of the chassis when you're building the front axle. So as you can see, I've actually set it up so the chassis is level with the setup plate which then obviously determines the height of the front axle and also now the chassis is together there are a couple of measurements that you might find very helpful in your build and that is the distance of the wheel spacing so i've worked out that it's 96.5 mil when you use your calipers on the inside of those rims yes it will spread the axles a little bit because of the play in the bearings but even accounting for that it's about 96.8 give or take a fraction that's that is where it wants to be and you'll find that that will be exactly the same on both sides even when you account for the slop in the bearings or if you would rather something a little more accurate then you can measure the distance between the axle front and rear on the outer part of the axle measuring just inside the bearing so you're measuring the actual axle and that's coming out at 86.4 mil so 86.4, 86.5 mil would be perfect. And that's measured on the outside of the exposed parts of the axles. I'm putting a little bit of pressure on there and it's showing 86.34. So that will give you a more accurate measurement of your axle spacings. So that concludes the building of the chassis and it also concludes the fitment of the body. We can now move on to getting the body prepared and painted. So, now we've actually got the body mounted to the chassis and we know it all fits nicely. We can now move on to cleaning up the body and getting it into paint for real. Now obviously with any cast product, you're always going to get a very small seam line that needs addressing and this kit's no different. I do try my best to keep it all as clean as possible, but it always pays to give it a little bit more attention. So you can clean it up with a scalpel, a file, or, or and a piece of 1000 grit wet and dry sandpaper. And all you're doing is just going around to making sure that all the seams are nice and smooth to the touch and visually, and that's all it takes. Just a couple of rubs and you get a beautiful seam. Same along the bottoms of the sills, around the insides of the arches and everywhere else. And as a little bit of extra for my personal car, because I'm a little bit like that, I actually want to fill this gap 
along here with some car body filler and smooth that in. I just think it'll look a lot nicer when you turn the car over. Not that I'm going to be looking at it much upside down anyway, but I still want to do it. So this is an optional step. You can do it or not. It's up to you, but I'm going to do it. So once I filled that and sanded it up, I'll clean up all these joints. I won't show that on camera and then we'll move straight to the painting. So there we are, that concludes the first stage of the gloss white painting for the outside and inside parts of the body. And as you saw the way that I did that, two coats of Mr. Finishing Surface 1500 White Primer, thinned 50-50 with Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, with a rub down in between with some alcohol. And then I had four coats of Mr. Color Number no. 1 White Gloss, each coat progressively thicker than the last, again thinned 50-50, with Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, and both of these paints were sprayed at 22 PSI. Okay, so now the basic gloss white is down, we now need to turn our attentions to getting the water slides on before the gloss coat. So I'm gonna get these water slides on, once they're all on, I'll go through them one at a time and show you exactly where they go on the model. Okay, so that's all the water slides done and I'll show you where they all go. So this super van with the Ford logo goes in the top rear quarter of this rear panel and the end of the Ford logo just overlaps this body line here. The wording here starts at the very tip of the door handle. So if you start at the very, very tip, you'll see it gets really tight down to the bottom of sails. As long as you start really close to the door handle, you'll finish on the sails. I cut these in half and I put them on half and half and I got as close as I could to that body contour line. This custom V8, the C falls roughly in the middle of the wheel arch right on top of this body line. The Ford logo, you have a piece of door white roughly the same width as the blue line and that starts there again. I cut this one in half, put half and half on each side. The Back end starts on a blunt line and then just runs off parallel and hooks around the corner. All of these lines stop just inside the wheel arch. They do actually go round into the wheel arch, but they stop just inside the wheel arch. Your little uh, transit van logo here goes 
roughly corner to corner on the rear hinge. Same on that side there. The eight goes in the middle of the arch as opposed to the C on the opposite side. And your Ford logo sits right in the middle with the F and the D over these two verticals here and the Ford sits in the middle of that panel there. I think that basically covers it. The only thing I would say just to be careful on is putting on this wording on this side. Like I say, start right at the tip of that door handle and then make sure that this S on the sails doesn't overlap this door jam, but it does all fit as long as you start tight in this corner. And that's about it. You may have seen during the application of these water slides that I was using two products. I was using Mr. Hobby Mark Setter and Mr. Hobby Mark Softer. Now the Mark Setter goes down on top of the paintwork so that when you put your water slide on, it adds a little bit of extra glue. And the Mark Softer I was using on the inside of these arches here and here and also in the edge of that Ford to make the, the water slide soft so I could push the Ford down into the body line and I could get these blue stripes to form over the bead around the wheel arch. And I can report back and say that these two products work perfectly well with the Mr. Color paint, obviously, and also with the decals that come with the Ford Supervan. These two products are safe to use so you're okay to. So there's a lot of problems with certain water slides using certain decal softeners and adhesives, but these ones work absolutely fine. So time to move on to the lacquer coat. Haha, <laughs> you didn't think I was actually going to make you sit there and watch me put multiple lacquer coats on. Nope, that's all done. That's The body's all drying. We're going to move on and we're going to get these wheel centres in. Now, the way I'm going to put these wheel centres in is before I put them in, I'm going to polish the insides of the wheel surface, both the back and the side and the rim to make it super, super shiny. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Autosol metal polish. Now, any metal polish will do. You could even use something like T-Cut, anything you like. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to take the axle off, I'm going to pop the axle in the lathe, although you can just put it into an ordinary drill or a Dremel, you don't have to use a lathe, this is any way that you can find to spin the wheel on the axle, it's absolutely fine. I'm going to put a spot of auto sole onto a cotton earbud, or a Q-tip, and I'm going to pop it inside the wheel and on the, outs, on the inside of the rim there on all surfaces and polish all the surfaces of the wheels, and that's to make the back super, super shiny and the rim super shiny. Now, when you get these wheels, these wheel inserts, they'll actually come with a skin of resin on the back. So if you want the holes through the wheels, then you simply take a piece of sanding paper and you just gently sand the back of the wheel until you can just about start to see the backs of the spokes shining through. And you just keep going until they're very very fine and eventually what you'll find is they'll become so thin they just fall out and it's as simple as that and then you can clean them up with a toothbrush like this just to clean off the last of it and you'll end up with a perfectly nice wheel insert and then you paint them and fit them so let's crack on let's get one of these axles out of this chassis pop it in the lathe or it could be a drill as i say polish the rims and then I'm going to put a spot of glue about halfway down the inside of this wheel. Just two spots will do, or maybe three spots, nothing more than that. And then once that's done, push the insert straight in until it hits the back of that wheel boss there. And then that will be done. And there we are. There's a difference between a polished and an unpolished wheel. Now the standard wheel is very, very good as standard, but it doesn't compare to a polished wheel. I think you'll agree that's got a real good chrome look to it. Right, okay, let's get the inserts in. And 
And there you go. I think we can all agree that they look absolutely epic and very, very similar to the original wheel on the original Supervan 1. Now, the reason for these five spokes is because of this picture here. So this is the Supervan 1 being restored using the exact same wheels as what we've used on this model. And that's what we've based the prototype on because that restoration picture does heavily imply that these are the correct inserts and not a four spoke. So that's what we're going with. But I think you'll agree, they look really, really good. Right, let's crack on with the interior. there's the interior all finished now I didn't actually video most of the making of this interior because it's just me waving a paintbrush around there really isn't much to see but the main thing of note on this interior is the guy's helmet now I couldn't find anything on the internet about what his helmet might look like although he did appear to have a red stripe on his suit so I put that on but the helmet was a bit of a mystery so I just kind of went with what I think might be okay for the period and what's represented on the bottom of the van in the first place i think it's okay and also the seat belt now i was amazed to find that supervan one does certainly appear to have a three-point harness picture here incredible i know but i guess it was the early 70s so what can you say at some point in the not too distant past it was actually optional to have a seat belt in the first place and this, this time period wasn't that far away from those days. So there you are. But anyway, so now the interior is all finished. We could think about finishing off the bodywork and then getting the whole job wrapped up and track tested. Okay, I thought I'd show you this bit in a bit more detail so it's quite an easy thing to get wrong. So on this windscreen here you've got a very slight impression where it comes around the A pillar and you want to retain a little bit of that spare up that side, same on the other side. And at the top here you've got a nice big lip. Now they, this piece across the top is the scrap piece and you want to keep a little bit of that. And then on the bottom 
there's the very first return and it's only about a mil and a half long and you want to keep all of that return but no more and no less so you just want the one turn there and about a mil and a half of material across the edge and that is all so when I put it into this scrap body you can see what I'm trying to get at that lip across the top is here and that's what you want to glue to or in my case I'm going to put silver foil tape there's a nice big lip to run across there the A pillar as you can see is just half ways it's half glass half A pillar and this is the re this is the return here I was showing you and it, it it follows the edge of the body it doesn't come onto the bonnet and it doesn't go above the resin here if you can see so it comes down the main glass and then stops flush with the top of the bonnet and that's quite important to get that angle there right and obviously the rest of the a pillar there because that little angle there that little tiny return slips down into the gap that you've created when you put your dashboard in so when you put your glass in that little return that i showed you that didn't go beyond the bonnet slips down into the gap between the dashboard and the sill and the, this panel here and then obviously your excess goes up onto the roof and that's all you need to bond the glass with is just the excess on the top and then you get a really nice perfect fit and you don't need to glue or bond anything across the bottom of this glass or up the a pillars so it all hooks in nicely and all you do is you fix it in the top with a bit of glue or a bit of silver foil tape which is what i'm going to be using and that's how you do the glass so i'm going to fast forward on now i'm going to get the glass in And there you go, just like that. Fit the windscreen in through the front on an angle, twist it into position, drop it into the gap across the top of the dashboard and bring it up into place. Manipulate it with your fingers until it's nice and flush with the top of the body. And when it is, just push your silver foil tape down nice and tight and then smooth them all out. And you end up with a nicely fitting glass. Right, so the rear windows, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them nice and close to the edges of the sides and leave the top and the bottom a little bit long and those are what I'll use to bond them into the back of the doors using again the silver foil tape. So I'll do that now and I'll show you that when I'm finished. And there we are so that's the rear windows in as well and like i said i've left a little flap at the bottom a little flap at the top and i've trimmed off all the corners and kept the sides nice and tight and then use silver foil to hold it all in place right so now for the side windows again i'm going to leave as much as i can at the top and as much as i can at the bottom trim off the sides nice and close and then pop those in with silver foil tape There we are so that's the side windows all in as well and as you saw i fitted black vinyl on the raised part of the glass to match up with the window rubbers that i'd painted in earlier on both sides and on the inside i've used the foil tape again and i've put the lower part of the foil tape as low as i can possibly get on the glass so that it doesn't interfere with the top of the door card when the interior goes in and the silver foil cannot be seen with the interior in Okay, so next is fitting the interior. And if you notice, there's a lip that runs across the front of the floor. And that lip locates into this rebate across the back of the dashboard. Now the interior simply goes in like this, that way, and then it goes in, swing the back end up, run it through the front, hook it over the back of the dashboard and swing it up into place. And there it all is in place, no problems at all. But before we can fit the interior, we have to fit the steering wheel and we're going to fit the steering wheel at about quarter to three. Glue them into place 
and then as you locate the interior in you can line up the steering shaft with the hole as you go in wiggle them into place and then force it home and then lock it into place with some foil tape now it's very important that you put the interior in before you fit this tailpiece when you fit this tailpiece into the body it makes fitting the interior incredibly difficult now there is a way to do it if you're unfortunate enough to have fitted the exhaust pipe in first and that is you put the the interior in this angle here so it goes in like that and then you can force this corner around that body mount and you can swing the interior around and back you will need to spread the body ever so slightly but it will go in so if you do happen to fit the exhaust in first then there is a way to do it but do not fit this exhaust in if you can help it first because it makes life a lot easier for fitting the interior so let's get this glued in and move on So there we are, that's the interior all in place, looking very, very neat and nice and secure. And as I say, I've used two pieces of aluminium foil tape because once it's folded and stuck in place, it's very, very strong indeed. It makes a very firm fixture and will not come out unless you want it to. So the next job is to fit the tailpipe. There's two locators on the back here and a nice flat plate there. Simply put a spot of glue on the flat plate, put it between the locators and that is the exact position it needs to go. And note there is a very slight downhill incline to this tailpipe, and that is correct. So let's get this tailpipe glued on and we can move on to the last few jobs. And there we are, the Supervan 1 project is completely finished. And here is Pendle Slot's van for their demonstration. And here is my van for my personal amusement. Now don't get me wrong, this was a huge job. There was as much work in preparing the standard van before I even went to camera as there was in making the Supervan 1 projects afterwards. But I'm extremely pleased with the way that they've all turned out. And I think that Pendle Slot are gonna be very, very pleased with the final result. So, how did it go around Crow Valley? Well, as I've said many times, 55 seconds is a good time. 50 seconds is really quite quick. And anything beyond 50 seconds is flying and where you need to be for a competitive racing car. And just for perspective, my fastest car is 46.2 seconds around Crow Valley. So, how did Supervan 1 go around Crow Valley? She did this. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Supervan! 
<laughs> well, what did you expect? It's Supervan 1. I swear as it was going around the track, I could almost feel the world starting to reverse. <laughs> anyway, how does it actually drive? Really rather well, I was quite surprised. Although it's 127 grams and, you know, relatively heavy being a van, it doesn't have a magnet in it and Crow Valley's an MDF track. It handles really, really stably. I was surprised. I thought it would want to tip all over the place, but it really doesn't. It's for a van, you know, it's really quite stable and I was very, very pleased with it. The chassis is extremely smooth and it looks the business going around as well. And to be honest with you, with a van, that's really all that matters. It looks the business. So at the end of the day, this Supervan 1 project was always a commercial partnership between myself and Pendle Slot Racing with the added advantage of being able to air it to you guys on YouTube. And to that end, I really hope you've enjoyed watching my journey with a standard kit into something slightly different. And I really hope that Pendle Slot Racing have enjoyed watching the transition of their standard kit into a whole brand new product. So if you'd like to buy one of these kits, if you get hold of Pendle Slot Racing, contact below. I'm sure they'll help you out in being able to purchase one. And if you've enjoyed this content, maybe you'll subscribe. And if you could hit the little bell button, that would also be awesome. So until the next time, thank you very much.